I will present to you the problematic of high performance applications. I would like to ask you, each of you, this question. What are your main challenges and concerns when selecting a microcontroller for your high performance application? So these key points are what we have uh, summarized from customer feedback that we have heard. A lot of time when people talk about high performance application, the main challenge they'll think of is real time performance. So what is the performance? What's the real time? How fast my code can execute it? The other one is memory constraints. And this is the key point for today's workshop. Which memory types uh, can we use and scalability and uh, memory interfaces for external or uh, limitation of the internal product integrations? The ecosystem, uh, how to build your software, how to build your product time to market. So the whole ecosystems and the product innovation, uh, product temperature range and security. Because nowadays we see more and more people care about security. How can I uh, secure my code? Uh, because nowadays people work with maybe third party, a design house. So now it becomes more and more important how to address the security to prevent middleware, or prevent uh, more attack. Um, for some customers, uh, they care about uh, scalability uh, and uh, if large package offer uh, is available, uh, I need maybe you need 100 pins uh, in your products and you need a number of IOs, uh, but somehow uh, it's uh, in the market only small package available. So for some people, uh, they care about large package uh, offer. Longevity, yes. We committed 10 years longevity and renew it every year. So it's basically... Um, endless, to be honest. Uh, so longevity and supply chain stability, this uh, we will address also uh, people concerned about using, uh, selecting a micro. Development support and solution cost and family consistency. For some people, if they want to select a micro, they think uh, maybe I can reuse my code, uh, this experience for my next project. So people care about family consistencies. Uh, maybe they can easily migrate between families, uh, within the families, but different packages and different uh, setup. We conclude these 12 challenges. You may consider, okay, then how to address uh, these challenges. So let's talk about family consistency first. Um, in our extensive uh, STM32H7 product portfolio, in these sessions, I want to focus the new product here, STM32H7-2 and H7-2-3-3-3, H7-2-5-3-5 and H7-3-0. This is the new product H7 series. It's with a Cortex M7 core running up to 550 megahertz. Uh, you may wonder what is the difference between 2.3 and 3.3. 3.3 three. Uh, three, three is with the hardware crypto and the 2.3 is without uh, hardware crypto. So if you need uh, the hardware crypto AES, uh, you may need to select the 3.3. Three. Same rule apply here. So H725 and 3535 is with hardware crypto and 25 is without hardware crypto. Uh, you may wonder what is also the difference between 23 and 25. Uh, one is with LDO and the other one is with uh, SMPS option. And the flash is up to one megabyte for what we so-called access line uh, here, 2325, 3335. We have this so-called value line. Value line is always cost optimized. Uh, what does it mean? It means basically cheaper. And how can we achieve it by limiting the flash size up to 128 kilobyte? So in a market, there are some other microcontrollers for high performance. They call it flashless microcontrollers. So we use the similar concept here in the value line. Uh, so if you see uh, H7 in the end is zero, it's always the value line. So ST, STM32, when we name the microcontroller, we have the certain system. So if in the end it's zero, it's value line. And you can see that the flash is limited up to 128 kilobyte. And uh, the idea is you use an external flash, uh, external RAM uh, for your applications. So the next topic, we would like to talk about memory constraints and scalability. 
before uh, we jump into uh, more details, I would like to ask you uh, normally, uh, how big is your code size? You see that a lot of time, let's say 90%, your code is between 50K to like uh, within one megabyte. In this slide, uh, we would like to show you the memory architecture uh, for your choices with STM32H7, 2, and 3. So you may, for people who just answer maybe A to D, you can use internal memory only. Uh, so you can optimize everything all in one. So H723 is supporting up to one megabyte internal flash and 564 kilobyte internal RAM. For some people, maybe you are not so time critical. Uh, maybe you don't really care about the latency here, but you need uh, to optimize the cost. In this case, you can use the value line and external memory only. So value line, we support it up to 128 kilobyte internal flash. So for people who answer A, maybe this could fit small code, maybe quite sensitive or people answer B, C, D. Uh, you can use external memory as well. Put your code in the external flash, but uh, with actual SPI interfaces, so you can have a fast uh, code execution and we support on the fly decryption. So this can dramatically optimize your code execution uh, from external memory as well. And thanks to the cache, of course, and on the fly decryption. For some people, maybe you want to have a mixed uh, memory architecture. You said, yeah, I have some critical one. It's real time. I care about performance. I can't lose anything. So you can use the SS line H72, 23, 33, 25, 35 with the internal flash for your code. If you have some data, maybe you need to store, uh, maybe just, you know, some real time sensor data and that's uh, tremendous. Uh, maybe you can put that non-critical part also in an external flash, depending on what is your requirements uh, here. So thanks to, again, Octo SPI interfaces support. Uh, we have two Octo SPI and on the fly decryptions. Uh, so you can also optimize the combination of external flash with internal flash. And the last one, external memory only with internal RAM. So this is with the value line. So for some people, maybe uh, you have a critical code uh, you want to protect, you can use a secure boot within this 128 kilobyte uh, internal flash. And with the Octo SPI interfaces, you can have, and thanks to the on the fly decryptions, you can have also your code executed from external flash. So basically we provide wide range of memory architecture flexibility here uh, based on your choice. So it's up to you basically. This is the memory types that H7, 2 and 3 supported. A lot of time people would like to use PS RAM and Hyper RAM uh, because of the low cost and uh, uh, AP data width. So you can connect it through the uh, two Octo SPI interfaces and it's a, a small microcontroller package. Some people, maybe you don't like PS RAM. Um, yeah, you want to use some flexible memory controllers. Uh, you may choose SRAM uh, name flash. In this case, you can have your flexible controllers and different parallel memory configuration. And we support up to two times 256 uh, megabyte. No flash here, uh, so you can have your code execution in a no flash, uh, uh, connecting uh, using the two Octo SPI interfaces or Quad SPI. Uh, so basically, it's supporting Octo SPI, supporting Quad SPI, of course, and on the fly decryptions. Uh, so it provides a flexible architecture if you would like to use the uh, no flash. The last one, eMMC. So for some use cases, you may need some SD card interfaces or um, SD MMC interfaces. So we support uh, two SD MMC interface and uh, SD card interfaces. We provide a wide range of uh, memory types for external memories. So depending on your requirements, uh, these are all you can choose.
we would like to show you some examples of low cost external memory setup with H7, 2, and 3. So you can have, for example, connected the NUR flash and COFS optimized low cost PS RAM here uh, for your frame buffer, for your graphics. But in the NUR flash here, you can put your code executed through the Octo SPI and the other Octo SPI with a PS RAM. So this, this is uh, one of the mixed uh, memory architecture here for the low cost external memory, uh, if you need bigger flash, uh, more RAM for your graphics. So two Octo SPI can realize it, uh, this setup. Or you can use the external flash only and execute a code from here. Uh, so this is highlighting H730, the value line. So uh, provide up to 128 kilobyte flash. Uh, so you can have your bootloader, your secure boot here. Uh, secure boot, secure, and then you can execute it, your code from no flash. So you can do the uh, authentications uh, with a secure boot. So without people hacking it and adding a PS RAM here for the low cost and for your frame buffer for display, for your graphics uh, uh, requirements. So we have tackled the memory constraints and scalability. Uh, let's talk about performance because this is today's main topic. H7, 2, and 3, this slide shows the CoreMark result. So the CoreMark is a well-recognized benchmark uh, in the world. So we use this CoreMark as, as a reference. You can check their website, uh, www.coremark.org, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, you can see all the microcontroller uh, performance results there, uh, not just the microcontroller, but also the uh, microprocessor. What I'm trying to show you is H7 II running at 550 megahertz with Cortex M7. We're able to achieve uh, 2,778 core mark, single core with embedded flash. So this is the highest core mark um, actually, if you look at the cormark.org, highest cormark in single core microcontroller. So thanks to the uh, embedded flash and today's hands-on, you will see the differences between uh, internal flash and external flash. Uh, you will see some performance difference, but we are able to achieve 2,778 cormark. The other one uh, I would like to highlight is deterministic behavior for the code execution for internal memory. So basically, thanks to the 64 kilobyte uh, L1 catch uh, for data instructions. So basically, you can have very good fast code execution from internal memory and thanks to the uh, L1 cache as well. A multiple bus matrix for autonomous operations. So the complex DMA, the scalability, and we don't compromise in this H7, uh, providing these complex uh, DMA uh, controllers. So the D1 domain with ARM Cortex and 7 and provide uh, maximum performance at 550 megahertz. And we also provide a high speed peripherals. And we have this, what we so-called D2 domain, and it can offload the CPU, so it has its own RAM memory. Uh, so basically, you don't need to go through the core, but you can have a DMA uh, in this D2 domain and offload the CPU uh, activities here. So this, and we have this low power D3 domain. Uh, to be honest, this is the slower mode. So if you are looking for the high speed peripherals, please use uh, D1, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, but the D3, basically, if you care about power consumptions, your application is basically sometimes in a sleep mode, in a stop mode. Uh, you can use this D3 domain, still have some IOs up, and you can still have some data acquisition. Of course, uh, you can offload the CPU as well. So depending on your requirements, we provide the uh, flexible uh, architecture on H7, H7 II specifically to address this performance. Let's talk about product integration here. So we have a rich integrated peripherals. Basically, it provides uh, autonomous peripherals with DMA access to all of the uh, CPU. So you can have a DMA direct memory access. So between the peripherals uh, and memories, uh, this can offload the CPU activity. And we provide the three buses metrics uh, to maximize the CPU performance as well. 
and the three FDCAN for time triggered functions. So if you need some FDCAN interfaces, we provide up to three. If you have some camera uh, LCD requirements, uh, you need to connect to the camera, you need to connect to a display, LCD display. Uh, we have a dedicated DMA for it. So uh, starting with a smallest package. So for some microcontroller in the market, uh, you may see that they are not so flexible because uh, dedicated EMA may be only in a, in a bigger package, but H7, 2, and 3, we have uh, starting with the smallest uh, package with the dedicated EMA for camera and LCD. It has its own Ethernet controllers. If you have some Ethernet requirements here, external memory with on the fly decryptions and up to a 16 bit ADC with 19 channels each. So if you have some requirements to have some analog interfaces, you need a high ADC. So it's a 12 bit ADC in a low power domain and a 16 advanced analog peripheral in a 216 bit ADC. We have also application oriented features like motor control timers, uh, PWM, uh, state of the art security, uh, like we support, and also uh, USB uh, uh, supported. The other point uh, let's talk about is product temperature range and large package offer because you may wonder about what is the temperature range and which package do you, do you have like 100 pins package, what package is available. So let's talk, talk about the, uh, these two points. This slide shows our H7 package offer, H7-2 and H7-3, starting from 68 pins VFQFPN uh, to 176 pin LQFP or UFPGA. And you can also scale your flash uh, memory size and RAM size starting from 128 kilobyte flash. So this is the what we so-called value line here, uh, which is cost optimized. And uh, you can also select uh, 512K kilobyte uh, flash uh, and or one megabyte uh, flash, depending on your code size, depending on your requirements. Uh, you can easily scale down, scale up between uh, the same packages or even between different packages uh, for the code uh, re reusability. And also we provide lots of the pin-to-pin -pin compatibility between different flash variants. So maybe you start uh, with the value line first and you notice that um, it doesn't work. I really need more, more flash. I don't want to get an external one. It's um, too much trouble. In this case, you can, you can use pin-to-pin -pin compatibility and then uh, migrate easily uh, to others. So the light blue one here, uh, it is H723 and 33 lines. So 33 is with the uh, hardware crypto and 23 is without uh, hardware crypto here. And this dark blue is H725 and 35. So if you, you see this uh, light pink box, so it's highlighting with hardware crypto or without hardware crypto. For some people, uh, you may wonder, I need power consumption. I, I care about it a lot. I need SMPS for my power supply. For this uh, red one dot here, uh, that has uh, internal SMPS. And the temperature range we support from minus 40 degree uh, to plus 125 uh, degree Celsius. So for most of the industrial applications, it's minus 40 to 85. Uh, for some typical critical applications, you may need to go to plus 125. Uh, so we provide a wide range of uh, temperature range here. Solution cost, you may wonder, how come this device can save uh, the cost? So basically we offer the package uh, four layer design. So in, in the manufacturing of the PCB, this four layer design can dramatically reduce your PCB cost. And a wide range of the input voltage from 1.62 volt to 3.6 volt with or without power management unit or external activity components. So this means uh, you can save also the PMU uh, unit here. We can optimize the current consumptions and product efficiency with a DC DC converter. So you can save external DC DC switch. So that's why you can save the cost using the H7, 2, and 3. Uh, it provides state of the art internal peripherals uh, like a ultra low power battery domains and precise RTC. So you can save the crystal using the internal clock uh, depending on your requirements. So 
it can save uh, the cost. H7 is a one-stop shop. That means basically it's all in one, everything you need. You don't need the two micro solutions. It's all in one to address your cost reductions. And if you have some continuously projects, maybe now you need a single core, the next one, uh, maybe the dual core uh, is needed, you can easily migrate it within H7 family. So basically this can save a lot of your development costs because your code can reuse it a lot of time. Um, your development time, which is the cost, Let's tackle the security part. Uh, H7 support AES uh, 128 or 256 uh, encryptions and a key provisioning for STM32 authentication. I want to highlight it's part of STM32 trust security for cy cyber protections. Uh, so basically support on the fly decryptions and secure SFI, what we so-called secure firmware install. So on the fly decryption OTF uh, DEC, that means uh, on the fly decryption, that enables you to encrypt the code uh, and execute it from internal ex external memory. The SFI means that it allows you to order the uh, standard products anywhere in the world and you have an EMS uh, which you don't trust, uh, maybe somewhere in Asia, uh, you don't trust it, uh, it's a third party, you don't want people to have access uh, for your uh, code, for your firmware. In this case, you can use SFI, secure firmware install with H7 and uh, uh, securely uh, program your devices. Okay, so let's talk about uh, last point, the longevity and supply chain. So we committed 10 years longevity. So now it's 2021, 20, so 10 years, 2031, and we renew it every year. What does it mean? It means that in the 2022 next year, we renew it and then commit it another 10 years. So we guarantee 10 years longevity and renew it every year. And we have a dual source, uh, so dual sourcing in supply chain. Uh, so we, we always have a dual sourcing for the fab, uh, for, the, for the front end and back end uh, to guarantee the stable supply chain here uh, and also the quality, of course. And the product available at ST or the e-store, you can immediately get it from our e-store or uh, from the distributors. Uh, we can, it, it can always uh, very fast uh, at your hand now. Yeah. Uh, the development side, so we will talk more uh, in today's uh, uh, workshop uh, in the afternoon session. The CubeMX uh, and CubeID, you will use it a lot in today's hands-on sessions and the Cube packages, uh, the nuclear board uh, the, and discovery kits, uh, it's all available with H7. So the software support, uh, the hardware, uh, you can use the nuclear as a reference design for your product. For the support side, so we have a worldwide FAE support offered directly by us, uh, uh, ST. So, and also we have community. So like uh, if someone posts it in a community, something doesn't work, uh, you'll get an answer as well. Also ST uh, technical support using your myst.com account. Uh, that's also uh, valid. We also have this uh, MOOC, M-O-O-C online training. Uh, it's a YouTube channel. So uh, if you want to learn something about security, you want to learn something about that micro, you want to learn something about uh, maybe a Bluetooth uh, stack, how to get it work with w STM32 WB, uh, it's all available in a MOOC uh, online training. You just need to Google it, uh, ST space M-O-O-C, uh, you can see it. Uh, so we offer massively online trainings and webinars, workshops. So we, we have continuously workshop uh, online training and we have more than 300 partners in our ST product portfolio. So the conclusion here, we have toggled these 12 challenges uh, in this problematic of uh, H, uh, high performance applications with STM32 H7. So some takeaway here, uh, I want to highlight is H7, STM32 H7 is the one-stop shop for you, uh, for your high performance application, because uh, we just answer these 12 challenges in this slide. It delivered the highest performance microcontroller in the market with embedded flash. Uh, so it provides uh, up to one megabyte flash 
with H7, 2, and 3. Even for other family, we provide up to 2 megabytes of flash. Uh, we will show you more in this afternoon. So, and with the highest performance. Uh, we have a rich memory and IP integration. We keep innovating our new IPs, uh, and uh, we always uh, try to allow a very small package as well. So that can uh, dramatically limit, um, uh, optimize your PCB uh, size uh, if needed. Uh, STM32, uh, we are not limiting our customer with memory architecture. So we address four memory architecture in this presentation. So you may wonder, uh, you want to mix memory architecture with internal and with external memory, uh, we're not limiting you. So you can choose um, your preference here. Um, and ease of use uh, STM32 Cube ecosystem. Uh, in today's afternoon sessions, uh, I will introduce you more about Cube, uh, what is the Cube environment, what we offer, and the large ecosystems, how to help you to develop your software time to market quickly. Okay, so that's all for the uh, problematic uh, high performance applications presentation. Thank you all.